Autonomous buses, which also are called self-driving or driverless buses or automated shuttles, are being tested with pilot projects in several cities worldwide. At the same time, technology is being developed, aiming to reach higher automation levels. Early studies on the use of autonomous buses indicated positive attitudes among users and feelings of safety and security during the ride. People are aware of the idea of driverless cars. They expect it to become a reality. But are parents ready to trust the safety of their children to driverless school buses? Isn't it too early? Let's find out in this video. America may not be ready to transport school children in driverless buses, but the technology is advancing fast. While complete autonomy is still years off, many big players, including Tesla, Google, Nissan, and Uber, are working hard to get their prototypes on the roads. But how does the general public feel about being transported in driverless vehicles? According to a survey, more Americans expressed concern than showed enthusiasm about the advent of driverless vehicles. Although more than 54% of those involved in the survey expressed some levels of concern, to be able to accept driverless school buses as the norm for the future requires an understanding of how autonomous vehicles work and insight into different levels of autonomous driving. A car that drives itself doesn't happen by magic. There's a lot of sound technology behind it. If you trust your GPS to get you to the new coffee shop across the city or another town, you're already on your way to a trusting tech to make decisions on your behalf. Self-driving vehicles just use much more tech and can make many more decisions. They use several types of sensors, including cameras, radar, and LIDAR to create a map of their surroundings. LIDAR is a sensor that uses invisible laser beams to precisely measure distances. All this information is then used by the vehicle software to plot a path and to send instructions to the vehicle actuators to get the acceleration, braking, and steering going. Self-driving systems depend on machine learning to operate safely. Machine learning is a field of artificial intelligence. In machine learning, software digests large amounts of data and learns from that data to carry out a specific task, such as spotting a pedestrian or an oncoming. The software is programmed with road safety rules, obstacle avoidance algorithms, as well as smart object discrimination to ensure safe driving. Autonomous driving is graded into different levels, from level 1 which involves minimal automation to level 5 which is complete automation. Level 3 would still involve human intervention and level 4 would involve complete self-driving but under limited conditions like carefully mapped areas. At this point, no self-driving system has been certified as level 3 or level 4 in America. So the question on everyone's mind is how far are we from sending our kids to school on driverless school buses? France has developed a self-driving school bus and it's been tested in Babcock Ranch, Florida. But that little bit of fun was stopped by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration or NHTSA. The next best thing may be the Seattle-based design firm Teague. The design company has come up with HANA, a prototype for a future autonomous school bus. How is HANA different from our traditional yellow school buses? Well, first off, HANA has room for only six students, with all the seats facing each other. The company says this will limit bullying. Secondly, there will be no more waiting at the bus stop, as HANA won't need to make use of central bus stops. HANA will pick up students at their homes and drop them off there after school. And HANA is a palindromic vehicle, just like their palindromic name. That is, her front is her back and her back is her front. So she can stop facing in one direction and move off in the opposite direction without having to turn around. And because HANA would never need to turn around, Devin Liddell, the design lead on the project who heads up brand strategy at Teague, believes it would save time while ensuring that kids never have to cross the street. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Nearly two-thirds of fatal injuries caused by school transportation from 2006 to 2015 occurred when school buses struck young pedestrians. By ensuring that kids are always picked up right in front of their door, Hannah would help keep them safer. Oh, and another thing, there may not be a driver, but Hannah's facial recognition technology will welcome your child by name and bar anyone who isn't scheduled for a ride from getting onto the bus. Another way Hannah can foster a friendlier school bus atmosphere is inclusive design. Instead of assigning students with disabilities to separate cars, everyone can board Hannah regardless of their abilities. The vehicle drives low to the ground and extends a ramp to the road when dropping off passengers. This makes the boarding and drop-off process the same for everyone. Once they landed on the six-seat design, Liddell and his team realized that there was other benefits to it as well. Smaller vehicles eliminate the need for what's called a hub-and-spoke system, where vehicles move along fixed routes. Instead, the vehicles would pick up all six children at their front door. When they replace giant vehicles that can transport 50 or more kids with smaller, more flexible cars, the entire fleet gets more efficient. Liddell says that the team's research showed that, thanks to the nature of school bus networks, buses are rarely full. At times, a single child will occupy an entire bus. 
Hannah would deploy vehicles more flexibly in a way that could help kids get home safer and faster at a lower cost to the school system. Besides being more theoretically safer for kids, Teak thinks Hannah could also save schools money. Big school buses tend to cost between $85 and $120,000 each today. Purchasing enough smaller buses that require drivers would cost at least as much, if not more. Since this autonomous future is still distant and Hannah's cost is still theoretical, it's tough to say whether Hannah would be cheaper than the status quo. But Liddell estimates that the concept could save money for schools in the future, thanks to another element of Teague's concept, that once Hannah's cars are done dropping kids off at school, they don't need to go back to a giant parking lot like today's school buses do, where they sit for hours until they're needed to do the afternoon rounds. Instead, they continue to drive. An obvious task might be to act as a ride-sharing vehicle for adults, but Liddell decided to stay away from allowing any passengers other than kids into Hannah's cars. He said they don't have as much control over non-student passengers. He added they didn't want that polluting the sacredness of the school bus itself. He went further to ask if they would be comfortable with vehicles where adults might not be making the best choices inside those vehicles. Instead, Hannah's interior can be transformed in just a few minutes using standardized inserts. This could be something like a roving Amazon locker where people could pick up their packages. It would be a place to put food deliveries for a service like Uber Eats. It could even act as a Meals on Wheels donation drop-off or distribution point for nonprofits. Rather than sitting in a parking lot, which the school district has to pay for, the vehicle could continue to work in the neighborhood, potentially bringing in extra money for the school. Liddell also noted that because schools tend to move slower than other institutions, we might see something like Han on the Roads about five years after mainstream adoption of self-driving cars, which one study from the research firm Gardner optimistically suggests could occur in as little as four or five years from now. And that's a huge maybe. Not only do school districts move slowly, but navigating federal and municipal regulations is a serious hurdle. As for one who would be underwriting the research and development for a concept as ambitious as this, Liddell has an idea for that too. He envisions a company like Amazon, Lyft, or even FedEx or UPS offering a service like this to local governments, perhaps in exchange for a tax break of some kind. Liddell says the more they explore the downtime use of the vehicles, the more it became apparent that someone like Amazon could deploy the next generation of future delivery vehicles and take on pupil transportation as a side gig. It's no news that pupil transportation is nothing if not an extraordinary logistics challenge. Hannah is obviously just a concept, and while some of its features are possible today, it's still a long way away from reality. Ultimately, it's more of a thought experiment that investigates how autonomous vehicles will function in society. It raises the question, when autonomous vehicles are more widespread, will we trust them? The whole notion of will you put your kids on board an autonomous vehicle ends up being a proxy for the question around autonomous vehicles in general, Liddell says. We'll know we finally arrived at a moment of trusting autonomous vehicles when we're okay putting our kids on them. So, what did you think about Hannah? Would you let your kids ride on one of these? Let me know down below, and I'll see you in the next video.